Got a couple more exponent rules for you. This time we're gonna be dealing with negative exponents. And what happens with negative exponents, like here, this negative four is being applied to the x. Negative exponents, they're going to flip to the other side of the fraction. So remember, you can always make anything over one. So here that would go to the bottom or to the denominator and it would become positive. What I mean by that is the six is not being affected by the negative four, so that's gonna stay on the top. However, this is now gonna to go to the bottom, and when it goes to the bottom, it becomes a positive exponent. So six times x to the negative four is gonna be six over x to the fourth power. All right, let's try a couple examples here with that, see if we can figure these ones out as well. Same thing on number one here. This is gonna become two over y to the positive 11. Remember, it goes to the bottom and becomes positive. So that's my final answer there. On this one, this one doesn't look like it's gonna be harder, but it actually is a little bit because it goes to the bottom and becomes positive, but what's left on top? And if you remember, we can always multiply anything by one. That does not change this problem at all. And so that one is almost like a placeholder that's there on the top of that fraction in the numerator. So this is the final answer. All right, number three, this one has a three that's not being affected by either of the negative exponents. So it's gonna stay on the top of our fraction bar. However, the a to the negative four, this is a negative exponent, so it's gonna go to the bottom and become positive, a to the positive four. And then b to the negative nine, this also works if you start in the denominator, you can flip it to the numerator. So if it starts from the bottom, you're gonna flip it to the top. It's gonna flip to the top and become a positive nine. So it works either way, whether you start in the top and go to the bottom, or if you start in the bottom and go to the top. So this would be the final answer on that one. And then the last one over here that we're gonna do before we try some harder ones, this one is kind of like this one with the x to the negative seventh. It's all gonna go to the bottom and become three to the positive third, all right, with a placeholder of one on top. And remember, a lot of times, um, your teachers want you to evaluate this. So three to the third is 27, three times three times three. So this is gonna be one over 27 for the final answer on that one. Let's try some harder ones. All right, these next three are a little bit tougher. Here it says a to the negative fourth times b to the negative second over a to the negative six times b to the seventh. Now what you wanna realize and kind of remember when you have multiple um, of the bases and they're both negative, is think about which one is bigger or which one is maybe closer to zero if they're both negative. In this case, the negative four is actually the bigger number. It's the one that is um, closer to zero, closer to being positive. And so that's where our A's are gonna end up. We're gonna end up with A's on the top, okay? Same thing with the B's, which B is bigger? Well, the seven on the bottom, this one is positive, that one's negative, so obviously the B is gonna end up in the bottom. Now to do the math here, what we're gonna think about is we're just really gonna subtract. We're gonna say negative four minus a negative six. And you can see what will happen on this one is that's gonna turn positive and we're gonna get A to the second power on the top. With the Bs, same thing. I'm gonna do the subtraction though on the bottom. Seven minus a negative two. It's gonna turn positive to give me B to the ninth. So the answer here is A to the second over B to the ninth. Number two is similar um, that we have kind of multiples here, X's on top and bottom, Y's and Z's. And so let's work through those as well. Which, um, which X is bigger, negative one or negative three? Well, negative three is closer to being positive, so it is bigger. It's gonna end up on the top. And if I were to think negative one minus a negative three, it's gonna to add together and eventually, here, I'll do another one down here. Eventually we're gonna get x to the second power. The y's, well, the four is bigger on the bottom. So we'll say y to the four minus two. Four minus two, of course, is two. And then the last one here is the z's. Um, a couple things with this one. Really, this is just gonna become one, but to kind of prove my point from earlier that it's gonna end up on that side with the bigger number, Zero is larger than negative three. And so down here, it's gonna be on the bottom of my fraction. And I can say Z to the zero minus a negative three, which would be zero plus three. And therefore, this is gonna be uh, Z to the third. So Z to the third. Let me make that a little more centered for the X squared there on top. And that would be the final answer. X squared Y over Y squared Z to the third. Okay, real quick before we move to the last one, this would work because think about just the Z's 
this is going to become a one, right? We learned that when we erase something to the zero power, it's a one. And then if I just think of my normal, um, my normal, a few problems when I just had one negative exponent from the first few slides, if I were to just take that and flip it to the bottom, this is going to flip to the bottom, become Z to the positive three. And that's exactly what we ended up with. So to show you that we were able to use a zero and subtract the negative three there. All right, last one over here, this one's tricky. It's got M's and N's going on on the inside, as well as all raised to the negative one on the outside. So we're gonna try to simplify the inside first and then apply that negative one and go from there. If the problem was just nine over 18, this would be a one over a two, okay? And the M's, which M is larger? Well, the M on the bottom is. This is gonna be M to the seventh minus the top, which is four. And same thing for the n's, the n on the bottom is bigger, n to the four minus zero, okay? And this is all raised to the negative one. Now, what this will do, I'm gonna show you how to apply it first and I'll show you a little shortcut after that. This negative one's gonna be applied to the one on the top, so one to the negative one. Down here, it's gonna be applied to the two, to the negative one. If you think about this, seven minus four, is three, so this is gonna become m to the negative three, All right? This was positive three, so that's gonna become a negative three. Then the last one, four minus zero is four, and then four times a negative one, this will be n to the negative four. You'll notice that when I have a negative exponent on the outside, after I've fixed all the ones on the inside to make them positive, what this will essentially do is they're just gonna flip their positions. Your numerator will end up in the denominator. Your denominator will end up in the numerator. What I mean by that is here, let's see, I'm kind of run out of room, but this is gonna become two to the first, or just two, m to the positive three, n to the positive four, over one to the positive one, which is just one. So both those flipped and all their exponents are now positive. So that is my answer. You really don't need that one on the bottom. You could just leave it like this.